Welcome to a tutorial video on procedural generation in Twine. In this video, I'm going to talk about creating names in Harlow 3. So I'm going to show an example right here, and we see a name. If I refresh, we see a different name, and a different one, and a different one, and a different one. So what exactly is going on here? Well, I'm generating new names, but I'm doing it through a combination of different techniques used within Harlow. So let's look at the code to go through all of this. So the first thing that's happening is that I'm using a startup passage. Notice it has a startup tag. This is the very first passage that will be run when the story is started. And I'm doing two different things here. The first of which is I'm embedding multiple uses of macros to create a complex expression. The expression is to go look for a passage, royal names, get its source, so the text source of that, convert the text source of that using the word macros into an array. So we have an array of whatever's in that passage. And then next, I'm getting the length of that array. Now let's go look at royal names. Royal names, we see, is just a list of combinations of things. A bunch of different names have been chopped up into syllables here. So we have in, men, der, through, a gel. Everything we want here just to create random names that look semi-authentic for for more ancient royal names. And these are just examples we could use here. So we have a passage just full of names, each one to a new line. And then over here in startup, as I mentioned, we're looking for that passage using the passage macro. Then we're getting its source, so the text of that passage. Then we're using the words macro to convert the text into an array. And then finally, we're getting its length. Well, why do we need its length? Well, because we don't want to reuse or recalculate the length every time. So we know what the initial values are. We go ahead and get all of that, we put it into an array, then we get that array's length, and we can use that array's length to get random entries within that. And in fact, that's the next thing that's going on. So as a review, we're getting its text, converting its text into an array, then saving the length of that array. Now I'm going to jump over here to the start passage because this is next technically in line. So the next thing that's happening is I'm using the display macro to display the contents of another passage. In this case, a passage called generate name. Let's go look at generate name. Generate name is doing three things here in order. The first of which is it's getting a new random number from one to the length of that array we created during the startup passage. Now, this is why we saved that length, so we wouldn't have to recalculate it each time, and we just could keep using it because we already know what it is. So we're looking from 1, because we know that arrays start in 1 in Harlow, to the length of that array. So we're looking for random entry within that array. We're getting a temporary variable random entry. Then we're using that to get the value that's at the positions of this array's position right here. So the value that's at this array's position. And we do that within open and closing parentheses and using the possessive apostrophe syntax in Harlow. So we're first, we're getting a new syllable, and that's new name. Then we're getting a new random entry, and then we're adding it to the existing new name. Then we're getting a new entry, and then we're adding it to the existing new name. And we're doing this three times so we get three different syllable combinations, and we're just pulling them from a total of 52 that's within that set. So each time we're getting a new random number, the new random number is used as a position within an array, and then we're pulling that out, and then we're adding strings, and adding strings, and adding strings, packing it on the end each time to create a new random name, combined of three of these within this section that we're using here. So finally, let's come all the way back to the start passage. So it's generate it using display generate name. Generate name is pulling random numbers based on lengths we've already computed and is getting random positions and creating that true string. Finally, we're using the macro upper first to convert the first character within the new string to a capital letter. And that gives us that name. Notice here this is capital, and when we refresh, it's capital every time. And this is just a quick way to do that. So this video is a quick overview of how you can do name generation in Harlow. It's a little bit complicated though, because as we saw, there are multiple steps involved. The first of which was to create all of the combinations we want, all of the bits of the combinations, and put them in one passage. And we could, we could have separated them by spaces, but separating them by new lines is a little bit cleaner. So there are two different ways to go about that. So we have all of our combinations in one passage. 
Moving over here to startup, we have a passage with the startup tag. And I've named it startup so I knew what it was. We could have named it something else. The tag is what's most important here. Within this startup passage, we're doing a combination of different things. The first of which is we're getting a data map using the passage macro, representing another passage, in this case, royal names. Then we're using the apostrophe the possessive apostrophe syntax, getting its source, so the text of that passage as it appears within the story. Then we're using words to convert the text into an array. Then we're saving the length of that array. So we have an array and we have its length. Then I jumped over to start. Start is using the display macro to run generate name. And we jumped over to generate name which is getting a random entry from one, because we remember arrays start with one in Harlow, to the total amount, which is its length. Then we're using that to get the value at an array's position using open and closing parentheses around that position. And so we're getting a new name, we're adding a new entry to it, and adding a new entry to it, and we do a total of three times. Then finally, coming back over here, we use the uppercase macro to make that new name uppercase. So a complex combinations of using macros within Harlow to create random names. And of course, we could feed this other things. It doesn't necessarily have to be the new random names. And I've made this somewhat more generic, so we could use combinations of other things as well. We could pack this whatever we wanted. We could change the name of this passage from royal names to fantasy names or science fiction names. And this code is generic enough that it could keep generating names as long as we changed what we wanted and added new entries within this. Thanks for watching.